Good evening. <clears throat> Today is May 6th. It is now 7.30. That Mr. Gopal just told me. And I'd like to call the meeting to order with the Pledge of Allegiance and then the opening prayer. Or the opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, we're meeting here to, tonight to conduct matters of business. Guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being the source of our guidance tonight. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Lorene? Present. Reed? Here. Mathis? Here. Krug is present. Kessler? Here. Gopal? Here. Tucker? Present. Yeah, full board. All right. Um, approval of the agenda. Are there any, any corrections uh, or additions to the agenda? Madam Supervisor, uh -huh. I'd like the board to put on the agenda uh, okay. authorizing the township manager to get some bids to clean up the property on uh, Swanee Beach. The, the time was up today. Talk to the code enforcement officer. It's not cleaned up yet, so we ought to get some bids. And then at the next board meeting, we can award the bid to have somebody go out there and clean up all the junk. We have a court order for that. So. Yes, yeah. All right, now... Um, I'm just going to see where I want to put it. Probably just new just business. Just yeah. do it in new yeah. business okay. before we go into executive session. Mm -hmm. That's a good spot. It's up to you. Wait for here. I'll just stick it here. Bids. All right. Is there any other amendments to the agenda? If not, <clears throat> a motion is in order to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. I made a mistake on that one. Um, amend the ag agenda to authorize bids for getting a cleanup at a home on Swanee Beach. And Tom Broker will be the one that will well, oversee. You'll, you'll be, you'll you might want to do that as a motion. Well, you're fine. Uh, you action the agenda. That's good. Okay. A motion is in order. And I just said it then. Yep. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Included in the packet are the minutes from April the 15th regular meeting. Are there any corrections or requested revisions to the meeting minutes. The meeting minutes stand approved to ask for a Senate. Expenditures, are there any questions regarding any of the expenditures that you have in front of you? We had a pile of them. There's like three sets right now. Yeah. Four. No questions? All right. A motion is in order to approve the expenditures totaling four hundred and seventy eight thousand six hundred and fifty eight dollars and twenty six cents. Second. Support. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. I vote yes, Mathis. Yes. Kessler. Yes. Reed. Yes. Gopal. Yes. Tucker. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. Motion passes. This one is public hearings. This is a rezoning for R19-002, Horizon Lakes Airport, a park, parcel 0629-626-037, and also 0629 Three nine. All right, I said that one wrong because it it should be only one. No, that's right. All right, this is on <coughs> six eighteen Silver Lake Road, amendment to existing PUD to allow fifteen airplanes hangers. Public hearing. Uh, 
this is the first reading of the public hearing. John Tucker, can you explain what this is all about, please? Thank you, Bonnie. I'd be happy to. Um, this is a request to come in and amend PUD, which is a legislative function that we're, we're doing. That's why it's in front of the board. What um, is going on here is when the uh, PUD was originally approved, it had two very large hangers as part of the approval process. What the applicant has asked is that the, the market just isn't there for the large hangers, so they've asked to uh, build smaller hangers up to uh, 15, is that the number that we have? That, I think that's what you said, what everybody just said in terms of the number. Uh, came in front of the Planning Commission. We did ask for some conditions that have been incorporated in what you have in front of you. Those conditions are essentially that the square footage of all the smaller hangers don't exceed the total of the square footage that was allowed for the two larger hangers. So there's no more hangar space, it's just divided up into smaller pieces. What they're, I think, the intention to do is sell them as condominium units. Um, the other issue that was raised at the planning commission level was um, using hangers for non-hanger purposes. And as you will see when you look at the package, there's part of the conditions, there's approved uses and uses that aren't approved. And paraphrasing slightly, what uh, the request for is essentially to allow the use of the hangers for um, aircraft purposes and related ancillary uses, but not for other commercial uses. You know, one of the examples in there is you can't run a chauffeur, you can't put your limo on one of these and run your chauffeur business out of here. Uh, that is an issue with um, <coughs> other airports having uh, just non-airline uses for them. They just never took off, so they were renting them for whatever they could do. So the applicant did respond to those uh, requests or issues that were raised at the planning commission level. And as, as it's been revised, it stands before you with a unanimous recommendation for approval. Are there any questions? Yes. from any of you board members. Was there, John, was there a discussion of storage of any automobiles? I know that this is commonly done, especially in places like Florida, Las Vegas, where hangers for airplanes, they buy a single hanger, but it also has 15 to 20 cars. Yeah, um, and I think and that's... That, there, there is a big difference between the two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's actually part of... Uh, I had some familiarity up in Dalton, just a friend of yeah, mine. I was just going to say, Dalton is doing it in his cars. And, you know, he's, he just takes, he, he's a mechanic kind of guy, and he takes old cars and works on them and in there. Um, what you've got, well, maybe the best way to do it is look at what you can't do. Um, if I can roll through the list here without number two, which is not for me. Yeah. Well, but if you look to the permitted uses. Yeah, under H. Under yeah. You can do, there's some, G basically and H. you can do automobile Storage. associated with you know, the aircraft business, but you're not just doing automobiles, automobile. Right. So you can, so you can do as long it. as you have a plan in there, a plane in there, you can store your other toys. That's, that's. The idea. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Huh? Yeah, yeah. From the ones I've seen. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, if I had one, I'd want to put my toys in there too. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, the issue, at least as we were perceiving it, is, is if you're doing those kinds of things without an aircraft in there, then we have an issue. So the aircraft is required, yes. according to you. Okay. Yes. So are these hangars going to be similar? I mean, for visualization, like Dalton, just separate? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cody, do you want to stand up and we'll ask and questions and Mr. go Walsh, to the microphone? Are we going to have paved access to each hangar? I mean, I mean uh, knowing what Linden is now, I don't know where they're going to go, but I mean, is there going to be a, like Dalton, you know, you can, you're not driving on grass to get to any of them? No, paved access. Okay. Yeah, the, the airplanes and the cars are going to share the same, because there's not enough room to put streets and taxiways so you'll you'll taxi down or drive down a taxiway and as to vehicles you know obviously if you take your car to the airport to fl go fly you got to park it someplace and mm -hmm. so it uh, it's anticipated they'll be parked inside while the airplane's gone that's pretty normal 
And there was a question that you had that I maybe didn't answer. For Vince, did you have a question for him? No. Yeah. I know the original ones, the the homes that yeah. have the hangers yes. mm -hmm. included. That is fantastic. But yeah. people did put their cars in there. Sure. I mean, it's connected. You go right in the house, and yeah. there's the garage and the big hanger. And yeah, we've yeah. had a problem with one neighbor who bought one of those hanger homes uh, out of foreclosure and turned it into a eight cars or something. I mean, and some of them were outside, so we've really clamped down on that. And uh, now it's uh, it's back to normal. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. And that's the reason I asked about the car, because there's been no problem looking for it up. Yeah. The runway ends up being a race car. Oh, no. <laughs> this this runway is owned by <laughs> this no. runway is owned by MDOT. So uh, if we uh, we have to manage it for MDOT and one of the things is security okay. management and we've had to chase snowmobiles off there once or twice, but uh, they've not come back. Mm hmm is there any other questions? Cody, do you want to say something else about it? Well, no, it's just, uh, it's really good to be back. We uh, waded through a recession that was uh, brutal. Absolutely. And, and we've, uh, right now, the, uh, we have three houses under construction this year within the air park. Uh, another lot is just in the process of selling. and. Wow, and there's a giant sign of relief coming out of that airport. Uh, we are, we're blessed that we don't have any debt and we have a wonderful homeowners association and we're doing some pretty cool things out there. Uh, there's a, uh, we are just putting a new, uh, I'll just talk about the community things that we're doing that, that I'm very proud of. Uh, I gave the uh, supervisor a copy of the Wings and Wheels Fly-In Pancake Breakfast, which is a community event. And that's coming up on May 18th. And then, of course, the Wings of Mercy Runway 5K is coming up on June 22nd. Uh, one of our unused offices is being converted. We've donated the use for a dollar a year to, some, to an organization <coughs> called Mobility Worldwide, where a, a group of local individuals build push carts for third world countries to help people with mobility issues, people who can't walk. And that, uh, so you'll start seeing some signage up there and, and these volunteers working and, and it's a very compatible use with uh, the buildings. Uh, we are now staging the, uh, the uh, city uh, Christmas parade on the, on the tarmac and so all the, all the floats gather there and, and uh, we're, we're really enjoying the relationship that we have with the township and, and uh, the adjacent uh, community of Linden. So, uh, really good things are happening, and we're really happy we're out of the recession. Let it let it continue. So. Can you talk about flight school coming back? Oh, I sure hope so. I do too. I, I learned to fly there. <coughs> yeah, the early '90s, and uh, man, what a you know I, I can't wait to see those hangers. Yeah, we're we're really looking forward to it. Um, I I think that's a logical next growth. Um, our fundraiser this year we're benefiting uh, in Flint. There's a, a the intermediate school district has a new aviation education program for uh, yeah. kids who can't. Seniors and seniors, I think. Yeah, and uh, so our our proceeds from our May 18th event are going to benefit those scholarships and. Uh, more of that will happen, and, and I think you're going to see a flight school back there as, as the growth. You know, we, we've got to get more airplanes on the airport, uh, good, I th solid. I, uh, I don't know how many Dalton has empty. Well, they've got a ton. Do they? Yeah, they, uh, they're about 50% occupied right well, that's now. A, that's a sketchy airport. Yeah, they didn't do a really good job of keeping the young... Yeah. The, the younger crowd, so as the older guys <coughs> built the hangars, passed, passed on, that the, there was no one in their footsteps, so that's been a challenge for them. Okay. We're trying to defeat that. We, we know what, what we have to do to, to keep it vital. So. Do you think they'll ever put a tower? No, no control tower. It'll never reach, the, you know, that's uh, uh, 200,000 movements a year or something. It's a big number. So we, we don't get anywhere near that. The airport is, uh, is landlocked and uh, it's, you know, it serves a great uh, service here for the, the, uh, the counties where it's located in our township, but at the corners of, of Livingston and, and Genesee and Oakland, it, 
in a, in a growth area as we know. Um, it's it's fantastic. We're getting a lot of a lot of transient use now compared to what we used to. People are are uh, we getting doing some just in time shipments of freight that are coming and going from the airport. But the recreational use, the uh, folks are trying to be really good neighbors, and uh, we're getting. Uh, I'm really happy with where it's at compared to where it was when we first came here 15, 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. You've done a wonderful job. Well, thank you. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to ask Mr. Welch any other questions? All right. Thank you, Cody. Well, I'm catching something. I'm going to take your leave and go right. home. I'm going to go home and, and take some medicine. I'm, I'm coming down with something. Yeah. So, thank no, you. No, I don't. It's allergies. It's definitely allergies. <clears throat> yeah, I'm getting something, so I'm going to go home and feel sorry for myself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Cody just gave me um, this, and if you've never gone to it, it's quite exciting. And it's at the air park. It's on May 18th. It's a pancake breakfast. Fly in, cruise in. Um, I've got this flyer here, and it tells all about the different times and that. And then they're also going to have um, a run on the runway at 5K, and that's going to be on June 22nd. So if you're interested, come up and you can, well, we can make copies for you so you can take them to any of your friends. But it's it's really great to go. We do have a car show, so it's airplanes flying in, cars coming in, breakfast, lots of fun stuff. Oh, it is. There'll be a big display for our Wings of Mercy organization uh, so people understand what that is and what that's doing for the community. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Feel better. <laughs> All right, the second reading is going to be on May 22nd, a meeting of this. May 20th. Any May 20th. Pardon me? It'll be May 20th. What did I say? All right, it's on May 20th, the next meeting. All right, reports. Are there any committee reports to be made? And the one was in regards to the bids for this home on Swanee Beach. It has gone through, Mr. Bilser, you could probably tell us, but it's gone through the courts, and the courts are going to let us go in, clean it up. We have a court order that um, permits us to clean up the property, bring in compliance with the ordinances, and we've afforded the individual a lot of time, hasn't done it. Um, I've been out there with Mr. Shaw, and so anyways, the court order permits us after today's date, you know, today was the day when we had to do that. <clears throat> He's not done that, so we ought to get some bids to have somebody go out there and clean up, get rid of all the trash and debris and there's a lot of stuff there. Mm -hmm. How are we going to cost recover? Oh, the order lets us uh, put it on the property taxes. So we, we pull title work so we know no first mortgage or anything? Yep, no. It's I've got all that, yeah. Okay. And everybody's got to know us. I mean, I didn't bring a whole file with me, I'm sorry. But I did do title work before we ever started it. Um, notice went out, and it's just him and maybe a wife, but everybody's got a notice of everything that's gone on. And the last order permitted specifically, and that was put on the record in court, and we could clean it up and add the cost of that to the taxes. Is he current on taxes? I believe he is. That's a financial issue? Well, no, it's just uh, that mm. some people collect things, yeah, you know? Not at all. It is so it's not a financial <coughs> arch? No, 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 no. no. In his mind, it's not clutter. It is. No, it isn't. And the judge one time ruled, because he said, he went to the judge and he said, I got it all done now. So the judge called me and had me go out. And it was far from being done. But in his mind, he had really cleaned it. So he, he knows what he's got to do. It's not going to be an easy, yeah, easy thing to do. We walked the property with him, his attorney, and me and Mr. Shaw explained everything to him, and there was no argument. It was just like, okay, okay. Um, I mean, there's it's just junk. I mean, like old rakes, 
Uh, lawn more, several lawn mowers, uh, barbecue, no, I didn't do a you know, thing. Weber okay. grill kind of things, uh, building material. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, yeah. And, and even great. though it's not something we have to do, he's put okay. brought in chunks of concrete, filled in the <coughs> ditch, and covered that up. And the road commission, the grade commissioner's office are after him about that. Now it's not a financial thing. You know. Not at all. Not at all. It's a beautiful home. But it's just, uh, you hate to do it, but we got to do it. You can't let it go on any further. All right, um, communications none. Adoption of ordinances. This is the rezoning of R19003, Lewis Van Lint, parcel 0610-300-014. This is Larry Road, east of Jennings Road. R3 to PUD, and this is the second reading of the proposed ordinance <coughs> amendment to rezone this property on Laring Road from R3 to PUD, which was introduced at our April the 15th meeting. Is there any board discussion in regards to this? Because we did talk about it at our last meeting. Since uh, I'll just, I'm sorry to continue, could you just give me just sure. a very brief yeah. Uh, this is on Laring East of Jennings. <laughs> it's one of the narrow parcels that goes back. What they're proposing is 23 um, family residential units. This is in the area that we've designated for multiple use in the future land use map of the new master plan. So what's interesting is that um, it's, they're showing about 40% open space. I think they might have been able to do this under the old zoning classification. And it doesn't matter. What's interesting to me, well, what's maybe just interesting just to me, but I was curious to see what kind of proposed uses we, we would get when we opened it up for a broader scope of uses in this area. And our very first application is this one, and it's very similar to what we've been doing all along. So um, they, they've got some challenges as far as uh, drainage for this site, so that's why it's 23 units and there's a very large unit on the end. Moose Promises is going to build a palace back there. Uh, for me, yeah. No, for Vince. It was for Vince. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's consistent with the neighborhood. It's consistent with the master plan. I hate to say it's a no-brainer, but it's kind of a no-brainer. Is there any other board discussion? If not, Mr. Fer I can see you moving all your stuff. Would you, would you like to come up and just explain anything? You carried it. And yeah, well, I'm a <laughs> um, This is, uh, is the same piece of land that we had approved one time for 42 lots. Mm -hmm. And we had some issues in the back with the drainage, and they were, were going to put a drainage ditch to go to the drain in the back. And then the economy did not hold. Um, now we said <coughs> we could put condos, about 34 condos, or we could put 22 units plus keep 16 acres on the back for future use, or potentially could be sold or for one house or somebody would like to have a gentleman farm. And we try to preserve as much of the land as we possibly can. Uh, it's a smaller project, it's not a large product. Uh, by using the front half of the property, we have drainage to the front and therefore is no issue. Um, we minimize the size of the lots in order to save as much as we can in the open space. And uh, straightforward project. Uh, we're looking forward to build it. Uh, we kicking around the idea of having it an ADA approved type homes, you know, just not necessarily be stamped by the government that the ADA but will have all the features that Will support that and uh, just a different concept. Mm -hmm. and it's a great location. Uh, there's Thompson Highway, access to the Thompson Road, uh, US 23 Highway, and there's access on North Road also. Uh, it's between the two schools. Um, so we could see, you know, like other subs we have done where we could have a mixed community. We will have older retirees and younger families that come in to do, you know, to live in it. And, uh, um, we haven't really um, 
pinpointed the size exactly, but we're shooting for 1450 to 1700 square foot type of home. Yes, please. Um, and we will have some sidewalks in there, and it's going to be a nice community. Mm -hmm. How many acres all total? 32 acres. 32 acres. Yeah. That's wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful country back there. Oh, it, it's gorgeous. It's all hilly and everything, and we, we try to preserve as much of it as... Great piece of property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Is there any other discussion? If not, um, I need a motion to adopt an amendment from the zoning ordinance number 594 to rezone parcel 0610-300-014 from R3 to PUD as presented. So, Do I have any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mathis? Yes. Kessler? Yes. I vote yes. Gopal? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Doreen? Yes. Reed? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Good. All right. The next one is a proposed zoning ordinance amendment to allow uses of less intensity by special use permit. First reading. This is the first reading of this proposed zoning ordinance amendment to allow less intense uses by special use permit in certain zoning areas. Treasurer <coughs> Tucker, because you are on the Planning Commission, do you want to explain why this has all come up? Yeah, um, we've had a couple of <coughs> applications at the Planning Commission level where um, applicants have come in and wanted to do something Tom. in a commercial zoning district you go. that was less intense than what it's zoned for. Uh, in the memo, there's a little scale there in terms of intensity, um, so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Um, when you do zoning ordinances, there are different ways to draft them. Some of them are designed what they call pyramid ordinances, and basically in a pyramid ordinance, anything that's a lower use than what you're talking about is automatically done as of right. Okay, So we've had some people come in and request that. Our ordinance is not that way. Our ordinance is you, you do the specific things that are permitted for each zoning category. You can't go downstream from you and obviously you can't go upstream under either scenario. So the proposal is to modify the ordinance in the commercial districts, not in the residential districts or the ag districts, um, to um, allow down zoning, uh, nah, that's not a correct term, allow you to use a use that would be in a less intense zoning district if you get a special use permit from the Planning Commission. And what that allows us to do is to, um, to keep our fingers on the, the request to see if it fits with the neighborhood, it allows you to add conditions to the thing, but it also opens it up. Um, Mike's uh, memo, he talks about it um, kind of tying in with what we're doing in the mixed use area. It's similar to that, but in the master plan, the mixed use area is only the mixed use area. We've identified that area. This amendment will allow you to use a less intense use anywhere in the township if you get the special use permit from the Planning Commission for it. So it kind of changes the nature of the ordinance a little bit uh, to allow a little more flexibility, but again, you got to get a boots on the ground review from the Planning Commission as to whether that fits with the, the, the surrounding neighbors when you do that. Uh, it was actually started by staff. I think it was started when Valerie was still here. Yeah. And uh, Mike's picked it up and ran with it from there. Does it open the township up to any liability that you can see? John? No, not liability. It's just, it's a matter of permitting yeah, I mean, you're permitting different uses in a district than you would have in the past, but it, it's, it's only one way down. But it's only on the on the on the less intense side of things. Yeah. Give me. Can you give me an example? Let's say you got a piece of property that's zoned M2. Okay. And I don't know what the permitted uses are in M2, but it's a fairly intense manufacturing um, district. 
if somebody comes in and says, well, what I want to do is a light manufacturing process that actually belongs in M1, okay? They own a more, they have the right to do something more intense as a use, but they want to do something less than that. Mm -hmm. So what they'd have to do is they'd come in, they'd ask for a special use permit, um, we'd go out, we'd take a look, we'd see what's in the neighborhood. Um, as, as I mentioned, with a special use permit, you have the ability to uh, impose conditions to, to granting it. So it's a pretty good way that, that you can um, take a very careful look at this. You know, and you can, you can tailor what's allowed to what's out there uh, in terms of, of the uses. Um, similar examples, Bonnie, we had a, like a commercial use that was in a high commercial zoning or maybe even an M1 yep. zoning and they wanted to do like a, an inside indoor jungle gym type thing. Okay. You know, and that would be down in a commercial use. So you're opening up these areas to different kinds of uses, but you're not just doing it as a matter of right, which is when it first came to the Planning Commission, that, that was the proposal from staff, is it just be done as a matter of right. And we, and, and me in large part, I like to take a careful look at this sort of thing, steered it towards uh, doing it with a special use permit. And I think that eliminates concerns that you might be opening the door to things that you really didn't uh, contemplate or that just don't fit. So the special use uh, permit uh, requirement kind of ameliorates against those potential negative effects that you could get by opening it up. Okay. John, can you give me an example of, of something you would refuse? Oh, let's say the, the, the structure itself, you know, what they want to do is uh, um, travel soccer kind of thing and there just isn't enough parking for that with the surrounding areas or the you know, the surrounding areas have things that would blend well with uh, lots of children in the area. Um, <coughs> pick whatever favorite high intensity use that you don't want your kids to be around. Um, so there, there would be scenarios where you'd say either from physical restrictions on the site or incompatibility of the surrounding uses that are already there, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. So, you familiar with Grand Blanc, the Elro, uh, right off Door Highway, just north of Grand Blanc Road? You know that because uh, I kind of it's kind of what I was thinking. But there's a soccer complex in that industrial area also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So this isn't more or less you having control. This is more or less you getting to see what what is going in there and just whether you look at the whole picture. I, I just see. I don't see a lot of reasons why you would deny somebody downsizing. Yeah. Generally speaking, that, that's what, you know, the basic concept is they're doing something less intense. So sure. just, just from a philosophical standpoint, you would think 80, 90% of the time that's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we do retain control okay. in the sense we look at it right. for that 10% and that spot you're talking about, yeah, that's, that works fine there. It's a manufacturing area, but it's an indoor soccer facility, there's plenty of parking. The two the uses are all separated. Yeah, that, that would be a great example of what you would be able to do with this. And I don't know if the township ordinance allowed that as a right or you know if they have okay. something similar. But yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, another question. I understand the upside. I mean, to me, if it was uh, <laughs> it'd be the worst case scenario. Uh, it, it, I don't see a worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Now, what we one of the things we don't allow them to do is to bring ag uses into other areas because they would open up all of those areas to right the farm. Mm -hmm. So that is something that won't happen. It's just not within the scope of what we're proposing. It's gonna be a bit more to me, I I see a few instances where it could be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, they're good. You know, they're you good. large manufacturing facilities Correct. that are in M2, and in the center of it, you decide whoever's sitting on that board or that committee decides that they're going to put a use in. I, I really don't think it goes there. Yeah. Where parents are dropping off kids to right. do ballet, things like that. Right. So I like the control that 
Right. I, I, I guess I'm asking you, why do we need this? I mean, if it's something that, I mean, what if, I mean, well, you don't. We you don't do. stop it anyway, so I mean, you know, they can come in and do the same thing they're doing. Why do we want to change? What about? That's what Jackson Court all the time. Uh, that's you don't, you, you that's don't. what I'm thinking. We're going to end up in. Court. No, this this, this eliminates those is. issues. Yeah, because it comes with approval at that point. You know, that's you're allowing them, and you don't have to do it. I mean, our ordinance, for as long as I've been associated with it, is you fit into the whatever the permitted uses are for that district, period. And if you don't, you go through the rezoning process, but this has the potential of eliminating um, rezonings here at the board level, because they can come to the planning commission, get a special use permit, so could cut down on the request for rezones that you have up here, uh, which you know, may or may not be a good, good or a bad thing, depending on how you want to look at it. But um, what it, I mean, the only way you're doing it is if seven, ostensibly rational people go out and look at it and decide that it's a good idea or it's an idea that would be a good idea with certain conditions. Is there any, um, any public comment in regards to this? All right. The second reading of the proposed ordinance will be on May 20th meeting. Unfinished business, none. New business. This is a purchase um, purchase offer, tax reverted property that we got back from the county. Realtor Ed Constable is not here. here. And anyway, I can tell you a little bit about this. This is a piece of property that's on Linden Road. It is south of Thompson Road. It's a vacant lot the township has uh, acquired through the county, through tax reverted. <clears throat> so we got it, we mow it, we cut the trees down, everything. Um, it's in a residential area. It's not a real big lot, and this young gentleman wants to purchase it on Linden. There is one thing, and I don't know if Ed even told him about it, but there's a big drain that comes underneath the road, Linden Road, and it butts pretty close to this property. And in the spring, there is some <coughs> drainage problems. But he has uh, got an offer, and I think the offer was $2,000, am I right? Yes. Correct. And in my <coughs> mind, knowing the piece of property like I do, I think that's a good price. Is there any board discussion? It's a trapezoid that's uh, 118 uh, north and south, and um, the legs are different, but there's 227 on top and uh, 130 on the bottom. So that's what gives you that kind of weird shape. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird shape, yeah. Yeah, it's just a trapezoid. But do we broken. know the... Not that it matters, but is this somebody who lives next door? They just want to expand their lot or have more no. property? Or this is a gentleman that wants to build. This is, this is a gentleman that wants to build. Okay. Did Ed tell us whether he thinks this is a good price or not? Two thousand is I've basically not giving it away. <laughs> I know if you if, if you see it. Yeah. If you see it. I didn't look at it, this one. Yeah. Okay, this one. I, there's a huge drain. Across the street. No, under the road that comes to his property. Oh. Right in front of his property. Uh, that's probably why it's tax reverted, huh? That's why I think it <laughs> put that right. Now, we could hold off if you want. No, no I, I, I usually like to make sure he, he tells it's okay, but I assume he wouldn't have given it to us. Maybe that's a bad assumption, but maybe what we can do is just approve it, and then uh, before we, well, I don't know. I'd like to hear his opinion, but did, did you have any discussion Tom, did he talk to you? With him? Uh, it was only by email. I expected he would be here tonight, so I was just trying to see if I could find the last time we approved reductions on the asking prices. Um, what was the asking price, Tom? I, I don't know off the top of my head. That's what I'm trying I to find. I don't have it here. It's not in the documentation. Well, we should probably wait then until we know what the asking price was and what I really recommend. Huh? Okay, he, he dropped the we dropped the asking price back in September to five thousand. Yeah. To five thousand. Yeah. And, and he wants to sell it for two. Yep. For what was that? When did we drop it? 
in September. So it's been going to bid on it for 5000 uh, okay. That's <laughs> well, it, it probably goes back to the point the bond is raising. It, it just might be a difficult yeah. thing. This one is. Yeah. But yeah, that's if no, it was five, months. then we agreed well, to the five. Yeah, look at the time of the year, though. When nobody buys in September. You know, then most of the time, if you're going to build, this is the time you would start to buy property. But it was five for Probably all flooded right now, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what would you like to do in regards to this? Do you want to accept the bid? Or tell him that we want to, we want three thousand or thirty-five hundred or whatever. I think I'll we should accept it. I'll make a motion to accept it and see what happens with the board. Okay. You want to do it that way? See what happens with, with you guys. What we say. Oh, okay. All right. I need a motion to accept the offer of Adam Landsmesser for the purchase of a vacant property on Linden Road, parcel. Number 0605 400 015 for the sale, sale price of $2,000 um, net to the seller. So moved. Support. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Gopal? Yes. Tucker? No. Lorraine? No. Mathis? Yes. Reed? Yes. Kessler? Yes. I also vote yes. Okay. Motion passes. It's been sold for $2,000. Okay. It's been a piece of property that I can remember oh, forever. And I've had to go deal with it with the road commission on this drainage problem. Right now, it's not that he doesn't have the drainage problem. But I mean, this culvert is big. That's right by it. So I think we, we did a good choice. All right, resolution number 2019-09, meeting participation by officials absency, <coughs> absent due to military duty. Um, Attorney Belzer, would you like to explain this to us? It's a recent change to the Open Meetings Act that you have to make, even though there's nobody here that's in the military, and you just have to say you're willing to make those accommodations either that they can talk on the telephone or possible do like a FaceTime if they're in the military so a board member can participate in those functions. And that's all this is, is a resolution that uh, affords the opportunity for that to happen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> is there any discussion? You're all set? All right, resolution number 2019-09. Clerk Crew, would you present the resolution? I present exactly what Mr. Belzer just explained. <laughs> Good job, Bob. For move. <laughs> Sport. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Kessler? Yes. I vote yes. Reed? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Mathis? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Gopal? Yes. Resolution passes. All right. Proposed support emergency operation plan. Fire Chief um, Bowles, would you like to explain? <coughs> and there is a lot of literature on this one. Yeah, that's why I'm going to ask Jack to tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much it's just a renewal of every four years we renew this plan. And we've gone um, pretty much with the county doing a more or less generic plan. So um, it's been sent back to the state. Actually, it went back to Lansing and they approved it and came back to Tom. And this is just for our operations for if there's any disasters or anything in the township. Um, pretty much covers from the supervisor all the way down to the last firefighter, police officer, or whatever on scene of what they're supposed to do. So it's it's pretty much Benton Township's piece of the overall county plan. Yeah. Yeah. And what they did is they, they kind of mirrored it all together so it works for the whole county. So when other departments come and help us, other police departments come, it's all the same. So that's the whole purpose of the newer um, form. So it's called the Emergency Management Resolution. It'll make Mr. Stam happy at the Sheriff's Department. Yes. 
Any board discussion or any questions to the chief? I've read plenty of these before, but they usually don't attach a name to the position. And I just wondered why uh, under Sheriff Chris Swanson. That, he, that could change tomorrow. So that's why right. That's exactly I think. Stating that supervisor Mathis may change tomorrow. He's wearing could be thrown off his board tomorrow. So I've never seen any type of language that actually states a name. I would rather see it with the position. I agree. More so than the name. Well, I think it, the positions are listed, but they also wanted the current names included. Okay, but it's the position that yeah. is in oh, yes. not correct the name. Because you'll notice every right. time a name is, is there, their title or position is also included with the understanding that if that's that, that's the bottom line, but they also want those names in the plan so they have it handy. Okay. I, do, I believe it's actually so they who they can contact mm -hmm. now in that plan. But yeah, that's and they revise it. They that's why we that's why we revise it every four years, so we can keep up with the names, keep up with um, the boards, the police chiefs, the fire chiefs, DPWs, all that stuff. So that's why they're revised every four years. I agree with Vince, but it's not a bad idea to have the names tape, you know, tight. The preliminary U.S. government only uses yeah. positions and titles. They don't use names. I'm fine with it. All right. Um, this one here will be excuse me, just one second. You, we don't need to vote on that. Yeah, we yes. just have to. Mm -hmm. we do. There's a resolution and a plan. You just one really one vote to, to adopt both. All right. I don't have it in my literature. I go. The next one is budget. Okay, but we've got to vote on I know. That. No, no. I'm going to. All right. A motion to adopt resolution number 2019-10 and the support uh, emergency operations plan as presented. Do I have a motion? So moved. Support. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Tucker? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Gopal? Yes. Kessler? Yes. Reed? Yes. Mathis? Yes. And I also vote yes for resolution passes. All right, the next issue is revise Genesee County Road Commission cost proposal. It's in regards to a paved apron at Odell and Linden intersection. Tom Broker, would you like to uh, give the information on this one? Yes, um, very simply, this is a project the board had previously approved. When the county put together all of our projects using the 50-50 allocation funds, they realized we had over allocated by about $1,400. So in order to get that back in line, they've asked us to approve the, the revised proposal, which is the same amount, only we're paying 1400 more than we were in the old proposal because we ran out of our 50-50 money. Does not make a, does not affect they the They changed it, yeah. Yeah, uh, including the, the spreadsheet of our, all of our projects, we're still uh, right in line with our budget. They don't want to go 48-52? Something like that. Right? Yeah. All right, um, is there any more discussion? <clears throat> Motion to approve the revised Genesee County Road Commission cost proposal for the paved apron at the intersection of Odell Road in Linden as presented. An apron, if people do not know, it's entering a road or leaving a road and it's paved. And it is not just a straight road, it comes out <clears throat> on the edges, on the exterior edges. So they're, we're doing this because of the children standing for the school buses. That was one of the reasons. All right, and did we, um, we did a second roll call, okay. Mm -hmm. Genesee County Road Commission proposal. This is in regards to Hogan Road bridge, no, re we got right. bridge replacement. I thought we did. No, we did we, not. We had a motion. No, we don't have the motion yet. Sure. I'll move the motion. Okay, Four. do I have a second? Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Lorraine? Yes. Mathis? Yes. 
Kessler? Yes. Goldpool? Yes. Tucker? Yes. I vote yes. Reed? Yes. Motion passes. All right, another one for Genesee County Road proposal. Hogan Road Bridge Replacement. This, I don't, I hope all of you have driven down Hogan Road and seen this bridge. It's in dire need of replacement. And um, we have a cost on this. There is um, Bay Regional Local Bridge <laughs> Program funds, and it's $1,068,750. Genesee County Road Commission will pay 50% of that, which would be 168750 Fenton Township will pay the other 50%, and it is $168,750. This will happen in the year of 2022. It's not a large bridge, but it's a bridge that is used constantly because of the sewer plant and the school buses coming from Linden. They use a lot, of, I mean, a lot of people use Hogan Road. It is, um, it's closed off to a point, but there is a hole in it and they've got a big metal thing on it right now, but I'd like to see it go sooner than that. Um, they say by mid-October of 2019, the, the uh, bridge project has been selected by uh, MDOT, so it's going to go for sure. Is there any questions, gentlemen, in Christine, in regards to that? I just had a question. Uh -huh. and, and Tom, maybe you can answer this. Um, <coughs> they're projecting this cost, but then they're saying it won't be done till 2022. Do they right. do they add May and general increases? <laughs> Well, the, yeah, they're estimating it, I, I believe so. But the board may remember we approved something similar last year at this time. They had applied for 2021 uh, replacement funds and mm -hmm. did not get approved. So that's why they're trying again this year. Actually, the amount they're asking for this year is a little less than it was a year ago. So maybe they're projecting the cost down. Uh, they, they seem more confident that the 2022 uh, grant will come through, but there are no guarantees. That's why they say we'll know in October whether we get it or not. We already started setting aside some money in the fund balance uh, as of the end of 2018 towards this project, and we can just continue to do that in, in the hopes that uh, it will get approved. Um, well, it's got to. I, I can't see it not. And so what happens if it gets approved, but then the cost goes up between now and the time that they actually do the bridge? Does that come back as a, as a cost share between us and the county? I think the percentages would stay the same. Um, what they're saying is that, that if you take the, the construction match requirement plus the engineering, that total cost is divided in half between the county and the township with the, the bridge program picking up 95% of the construction costs. So, um, you know, we're splitting the 5% of the construction and 100% of the engineering. Thank you. Any other discussion? A motion is in order to approve a letter of support committing 168750 in the year of 2022 towards the replacement of Hogan Road Bridge over the Shiawassee River. So moved. Any Sorry. further discussion? Second. Roll call, please. Can, can I ask a question on that? I'm just checking this online. It said that there was a $1.6 million approval from the township last year. That's what we just, they, they applied yeah. for 2021 funds a year ago. We committed our share uh, for that project based on the cost they had then. That project did not get funded from the state. Okay, so this is just, so we're just it's we a, have we're to reloading, reload it. trying to get it. Thank you. All right, we've already done the motion. Second. Yep. All right. Proposed amendments two. Okay. I've got so many of these things. All right. A motion. Do I have a motion to approve for that letter? Yep. Second it. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Kessler. Yes. Gopal. Yes. I vote yes. Reed. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. <coughs> Pardon me. Mathis. Yes. Tucker. Yes. Motion passes. 
proposed amendments to the 2019 Fenton Township budget. Operation uh, Manager Tom, would you, broker, would you please explain this budget to us? Yes, we just have a handful of proposed amendments to the general fund only. Um, I'll highlight them very quickly. Our revenue sharing estimates from uh, the state are higher than what we had originally budgeted, so we've increased that by 50,000. Uh, election reimbursements, and we didn't expect any elections when we set the budget, and now it looks like we're gonna have three specials with all of the costs being reimbursed back to us. Uh, so that 21,000 has been added there. Um, our server upgrade uh, has been pushed into this year, so we're, we're taking money we didn't spend last year, adding it to this year's budget. A um, couple other small items, um, but the net the net is actually an increase in the fund balance of about forty three thousand in the budget. So uh, overall, relatively minor changes and uh, no proposed changes to any of the other, the other funds at this time. I know it's a small number, town, but as a percentage, the increase for postage is significant. Why is the net number getting moved so? Significantly, I would think we in, in which machine? Um, I right it spread out in different departments. Yeah, I don't remember which one it was when I was looking at it. Um, I don't. I, I honestly, I, other than um, I went from like fifteen hundred to other a thousand to twenty five hundred, and I would just think we'd have a better handle on what the posting expenses would be now. Well, if it's election, then it's based on. So many. The number of elections, if that's the one we're looking at, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it is. It, it's, that's just a function of how many um, absentee ballot applications we mail out. If we have three oh, elections, oh, it's three times as much. Okay. How are we having three specials? Well, we have the one yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we've gotten word that Fenton Schools will do a um, uh, mortgage renewal in August, August, Lake Fenton, and possibly Linden in November. Okay. So does that take that postage increase to 4,500? Is that, or 4,500, or 3,000 increase? Is that taking into account all three of those or just the ones just currently? Okay. That should cover us for the whole year. Really? For all three. So you already, Tom, you already, as operated, you already took into account that the other two are going to be the correct. So yep. this would, this is not going to increase again? It should not. Any other board discussion? It, it could help if for some reason those three got together and had it all at one time. But That's right now we ha have no idea if they're ever going to do that, even though it would save a lot of money. But Wasn't that a proposal at the, at the state level in the state house? Yeah. But well, it, the school board elections now by they law can are determine. November even year. Yeah. But any other elections, special elections for millages, um, there are three election av dates available every single year. It's the Tuesday after the first Monday in May, August, and November. And so those are always available for taxing units, schools, governments to have special elections even if none, nothing else is scheduled. With three different dates. Yes. The downside is they wind up paying the cost. Yeah, well, we're, we're made whole on all costs. We're made all whole, but it costs a lot better. higher chance of passing. You don't think that's why they're doing it? Do you know? I, I don't have, I don't have the intellect for that. <laughs> Is there any <laughs> other <laughs> board discussion? <laughs> if not, I need a motion to adopt an amendment to the 2019 <coughs> Fenton Township budget, budget, mm -hmm. as presented. So moved. For any further discussion? Roll call. Lorraine? Yes. Reed? Yes. Mathis? Yes. I vote yes. Kessler? Yes. Gopal? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Motion passes. All right. <clears throat> National Public Transportation Day Proclamation. This is in your packet <coughs> in regards to this. Uh, National Public Transportation Day Proclamation. Clerk Crew, would you please present the proclamation? Want to be that way. <laughs> this is National 
Public Transportation Day proclamation, whereas May 16, 2018 marks National Transportation Day, a day to showcase the benefits and build support for public transportation as public transit offers economic opportunities and power uh, powers communicating growth by driving economic development and revitalizing neighborhoods. Whereas every one dollar invested in public transportation generates approximately four dollars in economic return. And whereas the public transportation is seventy one billion uh, dollar industry that directly employs four hundred. And 20,000 people and supports millions of the private sector. And it goes on to say, uh, now therefore be it resolved that the Township Board of the Charter Township of Fenton does hereby proclaim May 16, 2018 as National Public Transportation Day in the Fenton Township, Genesee County, Michigan. And be it further resolved that the Charter Township of Fenton declares that where public transportation goes, communities grow and prosper. I'll move the resolution. Do I have a proclamation? Make sure. Sorry. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. I vote yes. Mathis? Yes. Kessler? Yes. Reed? Yes. Goble? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Proclamation passes. All right. Um, Chief Bowles, would you like to come up and, and tell us in regards to what the, this resignation from Fenton Township Fire Department is? All of you have this resignation, excuse me, letter in your packet. Pretty much it boils down to we had one of our firefighters move out of the area. Um, he found it was hard for him to respond and fulfill his percentage and just chose to resign and um, more or less leave on good terms with the fire department. How many years has he worked? He's been here about four. Would have been his fifth year. This would have been his, yeah, he would have been starting his fifth year. And he's, I, and I do know he's moved out of state. No, he's just, he's moved into, uh, uh, moved into I mean, not out of state, out of like, this no. area. Yeah. yeah. Chief, is there a desired distance for on-call officers to report? We try to have them within six miles of the station is what we'd like, just because with your ISO rating, you have to get people to the stations and get them to the calls in a certain amount of time. So uh, if they're all coming from 15, you know, 12 to 15 miles away, it lowers our, it raises our response time, so which also counts against us in our rating. So we try to have them live as close as they can. Um, the location of Station 1 is kind of a difficult spot because it's pretty much all the lake homes around, so they're going to be on the outside community of the outside of the uh, parameter as far as like the lake areas and stuff. Um, so he just chose to uh, hang it up. Okay. So he's a good kid. Um, like I say, I, re I actually I hired him when he first joined. So um, it was sad to see him go, but he had his reasons. So he could move back into the township later on and, and, and come back. Come back. So. All right. A motion to accept the resignation of Tyler Smith from Fenton Township Fire Department effective immediately. Do I have a motion? So any, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Kessler? Yes. Gopal? Yes. I vote yes. Reed? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Mathis? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Um, now, Chief Oles, uh, Public Safety Committee will review hiring recommendations. Um, you have proposed hirings for the um, Fenton Township Fire Department. Would you Actually, like we to? have one right now for a David Sromager. He's a retired Taylor police officer. He's been through all the background checks, um, all our new hiring process, and has passed everything. So uh, we're just looking to move forward and put him on the department and get him running calls. What about Swintech? 
Um, there's some things I want to discuss with Jack about that, um, if I can get a hold of him. In okay, the so we only want to make a motion for, Just for Stramager David Stramager. Right now. Yes. Okay. Um, David Stramager was a member of our family. He was married to my niece. I'm not going to steam to this, but I just want people to know that. Um, David is a wonderful young man. He was a police officer at Metro. And Taylor. Uh, pardon me? Taylor, Michigan. <coughs> Taylor, Michigan. Um, I believe he was a sergeant. And he, he's done a wonderful job there. He is retired. He's very qualified for this. So I will highly, highly recommend him. But I just wanted you to know that there is there was some marriage in there. All right, I will ask for a motion to hire David Strominger as a member of the Fenton Township Fire Department. Do I have a motion? So moved. moved. Support. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mathis. Yes. Kessler. Yes. I vote yes. Gopal. Yes. Tucker. Yes. Lorraine. Yes. Reed. Yes. We have a new firefighter. He's going to be a good one, too. All right. There, the one last thing, I don't know if Tom, you forgot to get this in there. It's for the rules and regulations that we discussed at the last meeting about changing the wording on the occurrences. Yeah, we'll, need, we'll need to do an amendment, but I think because we changed the form to comply with the current language until we get it changed, we're, we're good yeah. tem temporarily. Yeah. But yeah, we, we will get that in soon. Yeah, and that's already been reviewed by Jack. I was, was he, re he reviewed the form. The yes. form, okay, yeah. very good. All right, board comment. Are there any other comments from the board members? Sure sign of spring. Dave Hoffcroft is in the building. <laughs> Welcome back, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> we know it's warm. <laughs> we know it's warm now. He never left. <laughs> <laughs> He's not saying anything. <laughs> okay. All right. A public comment on public comment on agenda and non-agenda items. Is there anyone in the audience? There are people in the audience. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> There's four of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will. Um, I, I need to put this into a closed session for pending litigation in regards to Paul Yorkland versus Fenton Township. Um, so I need a motion to recess the open meeting for the purpose of convening a closed session to discuss the pending litigation in regards to this. Do I have a motion? You move it, Vince? Yes. Yeah. Clerk? Kessler. All Second. right, any further discussion? Roll call. Gopal? Yes. Tucker? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. Mathis? Yes. I vote yes. Reed? Yes. Kessler? Yes. We are in closed session. Closed session, session. okay.